We are back on Morning Line. Our guest with us this morning is Josh Horn with Social Security. We can answer your questions as best we can, not we, he. <laughs> the 737-7587 if you want to join us. And uh, waiting through the break was uh, Raymond. Let's go to Raymond. Hi, Raymond. Yeah. Good morning. Ain't the only, good morning. Ain't the only thing that they can take out of your Social Security, uh, the only debt is a student loan debt, hmm. and that's what's causing all the senior citizens that have borrowed money back when they were baby boomers in that age are having to pay that debt now. If they couldn't pay it, they'd take it out of their Social Security. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, can they garnish a Social Security check if you still owe the federal government for some kind of student loan? Yeah, well, there's several different things that can be garnished uh -huh. out of a Social Security check. Child support being an example. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, any kind of debt that's owed to Treasury, they can uh, they can use your Social Security to pay that back. Of course, student loan debt would be uh, an example of that. And it's basically any any debts that you owe to the Department of Treasury. You know, they can come back and do that. The other thing that we see sometimes, too, and, and I'll just put a plug in here, is that some folks will incur a debt earlier in their life. Uh, for example, maybe they drew disability benefits for a while. Maybe they forgot to tell us they went back to work. Now they find themselves overpaid. We stop their benefits. They never really pay back the overpayment that they owe because they had gone back to work. Um, then all of a sudden they're ready to retire. Well, that debt doesn't go away. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they, they're sitting here saying, you know, why, why are you taking money out of my check? Well, it's you still, you know, from 20 years ago, you still owe, uh -huh. uh, you know, you still owe, owe some money. And so, you know, there's just a few different things that we can, uh, that may be taken out of your check. Uh, I do, inc you know, if you ever have questions about it, now if it's a, if it's a federal debt, you really have to work through the Department of Treasury or whoever uh, you know you incur the debt. If it's a debt with us, obviously you want to talk to us. Sometimes we can work out a repayment agreement uh, so that the, you know your whole check's not taken, or you know we can try to find a more affordable repayment option. That's interesting. I didn't even think about that. Now I guess student loans these days, many of them, are guaranteed by the federal government, and there are all kinds of organizations, some of which I frankly think are quite unscrupulous, the way they try to set you up with loans, mm -hmm. but we'll give it. And we just did a story in the morning news today talking about how, you know, um, uh, the Generation Xers are like a billion dollars in debt. And one reason is they haven't saved enough or, you know, and two, student loans mm -hmm. is a biggie. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they'll come after you to try to get you to repay your student loan and you should want to pay it back because you couldn't have gotten your education without it. But if you, if you bag it mm -hmm. and it's there and it's a guaranteed federal loan, someday it's going to bite you in the butt. Mm -hmm. You're going to get it. It's not like, oh, they're going to forget about it and go away. Now, there was a time where student loans were so poorly administered back when I was in school. There were friends of mine that I know to this day never paid back their loans. Mm -hmm. And organizationally, they never tracked them and they got away with it, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was wrong. I paid back all mine. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, yeah, it's interesting. They, I didn't know they could garnish your student loan money out of your Social Security check when you retire mm -hmm. from something where you went to school back when you were in your 20s. Yeah, I mean, if it's, again, if it's, if it's owed to the Department of Treasury, I mean, they're going to get that's, you. That's, that's connected. Yeah, so. that's big brother. They keep an eye on you. All right, let's go next to uh, Dorothy. Hi, Dorothy. Good morning, Dorothy. Good morning. How can we help you, ma'am? Yes, I have a question or two. Okay. I want to know, at, um, what is there a max on what you draw from Social Security when you are the dependent of one of your son, children, they claim you as a dependent. So your children's claiming, who would they be claiming your ch a dependent for who, who would that be? Like a child? Yes. Okay, so. so if oh, they're I, claiming I, their grandparent, their parent, is there a max that the parent can draw? Oh, meaning that, you know, the parent is a dependent to the child? Yes. Okay, maybe because they're older and retired and the child is helping to care for the parent? Yes, yes. That, I don't think that has any bearing on Social Security. I mean, it's all based on, I mean, if you're talking about your Social Security, it's still going to be based on you know, what you worked and paid into the system, or if you're drawing off of a deceased spouse, you know, what they worked and paid into the system, but it's not going to really matter uh, as far as who's, if anybody's claiming you as a dependent. Now, I will tell you, if you're drawing SSI, 
uh, which you know we talk often talk about SSI as a disability program, but SSI is also for folk, individuals over age 65 who have limited income and resources. So if your children, for example, are giving you cash uh, or or paying for your rent or mortgage or do, or giving some kind of in kind support. Uh, that can affect your SSI benefits if you're drawing SSI, but if you're drawing regular Social Security retirement benefits, that's not going to matter. Interesting. Yeah, that, I'm just flip-flopping things here. I know that sometimes if a parent dies, a child, a minor child, I guess can draw on some of the parent's mm. Social Security benefit. The other way doesn't go around. If for some reason an adult parent has become, I don't know, is, is being claimed or being cared for by their children and the children die, could the parent draw on the children's social security? Yeah, no, it's, I didn't think yeah, that that's not going to work that okay. way. That yeah. won't work. Okay, that, that, that's the first time I've heard a question like that, so I didn't think that would. But um, all right, let's go on to uh, Sue next. Sue, good morning. Hi, Sue. Hi, Nick. Hey. How are you this morning? Good. Nice to hear from you. What can we do for you? Okay, I have a grandson that lives with me, and he has uh, mental issues. And he has tried several times to apply for SSI, and each time he has been denied. And he was diagnosed with bipolar 1 with schizophrenic features. Mm -hmm. So we were wondering what else we can do for him to try to get help with this SSI. How old is he? 31. And have you ever um, tried an attorney? Uh, yes, but he was still denied when it went before the board. Okay. What was it, so did you receive a medical denial? Like, did it get a medical decision? Uh, I don't know. He's been trying for, to receive this SSI for many years. And, uh, you know, he has his episodes, you know, where he has outbursts and mm -hmm. things like that. He's on one medication that he gets a shot once a month, and sometimes the shot don't last, you know, through the full month. Has he ever gone, have you ever gone all the way up to the hearings level and spoken to a judge? Uh, yes, and mm -hmm. that was the time that he got denied. Okay. Did they do that? And I don't know. Did, did they kind of explain why they denied it to him? They just said, we don't find him to be 100% disabled? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, and we're getting very frustrated, you know. Sure. Uh, I mean, probably the best advice I can do is read the judge's decision very carefully and try to see what the rationale was. Um, I, I do know, and I don't know about your particular situation, but I do know that there are some uh, uh, mental disabilities that are controlled with medicine, and so you know they are able to work some. Um, again, Social Security and SSI's definition of disability is 100% disabled, and that's a very, very tough uh, uh, um, you know, bar to, to meet because if you're 90 percent disabled or 80 percent disabled, or if there's some kind of job out there that you can do, uh, maybe working with vocational rehabilitation or something like that, uh, you know that that, that it's not going to be approved. And so, you know, one of the main things is want to make sure that you follow your appeal rights at least up through the administrative law judge at the hearings level. Uh, now, the other situation too is if it's getting worse over time. Uh, sometimes you may have been to say you may you may have been denied, but then if situations are worse than they were before, uh, you can file again. Uh, again, go follow your appeal rights. But uh, you know you want to show that it's you know that there's no way that that he can work in, in any capacity. Hey Sue, did, has he ever tried working, or has he been able to work any time yes, in his he life? Yes, he has, and yeah. then he gets in one of those uh, episodes where you know. He don't want to be around a lot of people. So, you know, you yeah. take an employment place, well, you got a lot of people. I wonder, do you think if they were able to get him better medical, you know, because you said the shot seems to work but doesn't always last, I mean, do you think if he was properly treated, he might be able to function more normally, or is there no treatment for what he has? I think all they're giving him is that one shot once a month. And you say it seems to work initially, but sometimes it runs out. Yeah, I mean, and it, it doesn't take too much to kind of upset him real bad, you know, so. 
Yeah, boy, this and is... And he's been living with me, and, you know, I'm 65 years old, and he's been helping me out with my husband, which is 83, that cannot walk. Mm. So, you know... That's a tough I'm situation. A, and his, his parents are out of the picture? Yes, both of his parents are deceased. He lost his dad oh. three years ago, and... His mother will be deceased a year in August. Because of his age, he can't draw on his parents' benefits, can they, if they had Social Security? Well, and, and that, that's actually what had just crossed my mind. If you're disabled before age 22... Um, the problem is he hasn't been declared disabled. Yeah, I mean, that would be the, the, the thing. I mean, if he's, if he's uh, found to be disabled before age 22, I mean, he could draw survivor benefits on his parents' record as a child. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, so the, and they should have applied for that at the same time uh, that he applied for SSI. Um, kind of go but, with both but again, of those, it's going to be it's going to be the same disability decision. And again, if you've gone all the way to the hearings level, uh, there's not really much else I could do other than suggest reaching out to vocational rehabilitation. They might have some ideas of some things that he can do that might, um, you know. Once uh, you get to that level, and that can take you years to get to, and, and and it doesn't go through. One of our mantras here is always: when you're applying for this and you get denied, do not give up. Stick mm -hmm, with mm -hmm. it. Stick with it. At her point, does this mean? That though now to do this again they have to start over from scratch to reapply if they choose to for instance say if she thinks he's worsened yeah yes I mean, basically if you've gone to the hearings now after the hearings level you do have 60 days to apply for the next level which is the appeals council decision but mm -hmm. I'm gonna assume that it's been more than 60 days since the judge made his decision in this situation and in that case you would have to start over and with the SSI program uh, you can you can pretty much continue to, to file uh, especially again if it's a, a situation where it continues to worsen you know you may go all the way to the judge and the judge looks over the last six seven ten years and may look over the prior judge's decision and may look at what you know what the situation is now and maybe there's different medical records now and maybe the condition has worsened maybe there's different things like that and you know you may end up being disabled now whereas you may not have been considered yeah. disabled I mean if you were 90 percent disabled two years ago and now you're 100 percent disabled. That that's that's it. You know that's what we're that's what okay. they're looking for. So that's it's a tough one, Sue. Mm -hmm. I wish we could tell you more. I, I suspect you may be on to why this is happening, and you touched on it too. I, I think maybe, and again, I'm just you know blowing in the wind here, but that the judges are looking at the situation and they're thinking your grandson's you know condition can be treated. And if it can be treated with the proper meds where it's to the point where he can be stable enough to work, they're not going to grant him full disability. And so it may be an issue of one of two things. You find a way to get him the treatment uh, that's out there that might be more effective, or two, you have to get some kind of documentation from a physician that says, nothing's working for this mm -hmm. kid. And as a result, you know, we've tried it. It doesn't work. He has a condition that can't be treated. He is disabled. But I'm guessing that's why. I mean, that, that, well, it, yeah. it would be enough. He could, I, I believe he's legitimately schizophrenic, has a mental illness. Mm -hmm. But it may be some, and many mental illnesses can be treated. They're saying there is a treatment for this. If he takes the proper meds, he can function and get a job. And if they believe that, they're not going to grant him, right? And if he's 31, they do take age into consideration. You know, that's still, you know, the, the, they would still consider that a, a uh, you know an age where you could maybe Able learn body, something you yeah. know you if you can't be around people you know there are a lot of jobs out there where you don't have to you know be around or at least around a lot of people and so they, they may be looking at that again that would be you know a good conversation you know okay. with uh, you know especially if you go back to the judge well I understand her frustration mm -hmm. I, I ran into someone just it's yesterday tough. on yep. a story when I said so what do you do for a living she goes I'm on SSI and I said well what's your issue and she says I have anxiety issues and she very well may be. Mm -hmm. She looked fine, you know, whatever. And you cannot tell if someone's disabled by looking at them. But I'm thinking, she sounds like someone might be in the same boat as Sue's grandson. She's got her disability. I don't know all the details, but, you know, and Sue's doesn't. Mm -hmm. Like it or not, folks, the process is not perfect. And in oftentimes, it is subjective. You know, it's not cut and dried. It's subjective to determine if someone's truly 100% disabled. And as a result, it's not always fair. We're going to take a break. When we come back, more of your calls right after this.